Glory to God. As we approach the end of the year, I know many companies are probably giving people what they call a 13th check or a bonus or just rewards for the service throughout the year. You know, our God is the God who promotes. The Bible tells us in Psalm 75 verse 6, for promotion comes neither from the east or from the west or from the south. It is God who judges. He brings one down and exalts the other. Promotion or exaltation comes from God. It is God who decides who to promote and he uses various means to do so. In James chapter 4 verse 10 it says, Humble yourself therefore before the Lord and he will exalt you. Oftentimes we humble ourselves in the eyes of men to be seen by men. We try to please men, created things, created beings. I want you to know child of God we're getting it all wrong. The Bible tells us that when we serve, we should serve as if we are serving the Lord because it's Him we are serving. So wherever God has put you, whatever platform God has given you, remember to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and He will exalt you in due time. That's what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. I'm reminded in Genesis chapter 11 of a community of people that said, let's build ourselves a, a, a tower that reaches high to the heavens. Let's make a name for ourselves. You see, if you try to give self-promotion, if you try to exalt yourself, if you try to, uh, to build up your own ego, if it's all about you, if the center of everything you do is anything else but God, child of God, that comes before a great fall. Yes, temporarily you might seem to be getting strides. You might seem to be making traction. But God, God humbles the proud. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 2, we see God picking a man and exalting that man. In Genesis 12 verse 2, it says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. So you shall be a blessing. May the Lord establish and bless you as you humbly submit to him, as you make him the center of your life. The Bible says in Psalm 113 verses 7 to 8, he raises the needy from the dust. He lifts up the poor from the ash heap, seats them with princes. Yes, the God is able to do so. So I want to encourage you to remain faithful. Keep trusting God. Keep serving wholeheartedly. Don't grow weary of doing good. Keep being the light and the salt in your community. Don't worry when naysayers say you're not going nowhere. When naysayers say you're not successful. If they judge you, whatever standard they are using, don't you worry. You're in this world. You're not of this world. All these tangible things, physical things, they don't last forever. Set your eyes on things above. Keep serving God. Keep trusting God. God will stretch your faith. Yes, remember as God tells you to do stuff, as God tells you to... Exercise that vision to implement whatever he's telling you to implement as you translate, translate that vision to something tangible. Or he tells you to do whatever he tells you to do as you translate that vision, vision into something tangible. Remember to keep doing it, to keep trusting him. He brings provision. He provides from people to support, from people to encourage, including material resources God provides. I believe, as God told us in the beginning of the year, that this would be a year of supernatural growth, impact, and harvest. I'm getting so many testimonies of people that are harvesting in this season. In spite of the effect COVID-19 has had in the economy, people are harvesting supernaturally. I believe you will harvest as you have faithfully planted and sown your seed. And when I'm talking about seed sown, I'm not only talking about material or substance, finances. I'm talking about the time you've spent doing the things of God. I'm talking about the skill sets that you have used to bring to advance the kingdom agenda. I'm talking about all the things you've sown wholeheartedly to advance God's agenda. You will harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that my brothers and sisters out there will continue to trust you and that you, God Almighty, have seen the seed they have sown and the motivation behind it. For those that feel they were not being motivated by the right things, who feel that you were not the center of their lives, I thank you for repentance, genuine repentance. I thank you, Father, that they will do things that you inspire them to do for the right reasons, for the right with the right motivation. I thank you for lasting fruit that will remain forever in the name of Jesus. Thank you that you will supply, liberally supply, fill until full every need according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you that they will keep making their contribution the way you lead and guide them in Jesus' name. Thank you that they will keep serving wholeheartedly and trusting you in Jesus' name. 
May God robo si tarabande se ke tarabande so cobra. Minderebo si ke. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you in other tongues. Ma ke terebo si ke mentare be doso tarabonde. Manderebo. The Spirit of God knows what I ought to pray for, and He understands the number of people that are receiving this. He knows each and every one of your unique needs. Father, I pray that you address them as I'm praying right now. May you stir something on the inside that will move them to think, to act. And to do as you desire them in Jesus' name, as you want for their lives in Jesus' name. May they make that contribution. May they receive a harvest supernaturally in Jesus' name. Thank you for multiplication in Jesus' name. Thank you for growth in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. It's Pastor Busana. Have a wonderful day. One of these days, I'll be doing a session, just a Thanksgiving session. I'm looking forward to Sunday. This coming Sunday, half past nine, Corner Golf and Hampton Road. In Oakland Park, we will be having a service where we will corporately honor and just thank God for this year. You might be asking, "What has God done? He's done a lot." But anyway, someone stated that we need to thank God for what has not happened. You know, there are certain accidents that God avoided in your life. There are certain weapons that were formed to destroy you that God protected you from. You don't know about it because He protected you. So, just there is always going to be something to thank God for. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.